What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out Against the Moon. This game recently got a prologue that you can check out down below. I've got access to, I guess, the development build? I'm not super sure. So I got like the prologue in my email, like a week ago, and then through Steam Curator, I got like the full game like two or three days ago. And so anyways, the full game has extra stuff in it, so I figured we'll check that out. Uh, we'll dive on in. If you haven't seen this game before, this game is very much kind of like a, a monster controlling. It's basically, if you've played Nowhere Prophet, it's Nowhere Prophet with a different setting. Uh, the combat system in this game is almost identical to Nowhere Prophet. In fact, if you fiddle around with it, it just doesn't have like the cover elements and a few other things, and then it focuses a little bit more heavily on, on unit placement. Uh, so basically, it's Nowhere Prophet where your placement matters more but there's no cover and like uh, basically it's the same combat system with modifiers changed around uh, so let's dive on in we're gonna check the game on out we'll get started uh, the prologue right here uh, that's gonna be the tutorial they sent this over this is what you guys will be playing and it kind of explains the storyline of the game uh, basically the moon has gone rogue I, I don't know what you have to do to piss off the moon but the moon is super mad at us and the moon has the ability to like infuse creatures with energy or something now because the moon has gone sentient. And it's a, it's it's definitely a trip. And humanity apparently like Earth is all post-apocalyptic and destroyed because the moon is actually a tougher cookie than we thought, dude. I thought we could take down the moon because we took out Mars. Mars attacked, you know, and they were like ak, 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 and we took them out through the power of country music and yodeling. Uh, but the moon apparently has a tougher chin. Uh, so let's do a Luma run over here and we'll check it on out. This is the normal mode of the game. I have actually, I've played the prologue, but I haven't played this part of the game just yet. We do have our hero selection right here, so it looks like we've got like an old lady or something. It looks like she comes with, oh, okay, gotcha. So each of these guys is going to come with different stuff. They have different critters that are available. As of right now, it looks like we're not going to be able to like mouse over these and see what they do. But each of these characters also has kind of their own special ability that they can activate if they so desire to do so. Uh, so we're going to get some spells, we're going to get some monsters, we're going to get some various modifiers and also special abilities. So, you know, we'll play around with it and we'll see what happens here. Uh, we have Mazoon the Engineer, we have Amara the Queen of Arcs, and we have Galdir, who is the Primo Protectoris. Uh, basically like the Queen's body. This dude like basically protects... Protect, like there's like a... It's kind of like the God Emperor, I guess. There's like this lady that's inside of like a crypto sarcophagi. And she's kept alive by the machinery. He protects that thing because she's like a sacred goddess or something like that. Trust me, the storyline in this game is weird. It's real, real weird. You gotta kind of like play it once or twice and be like, all right. Uh, luckily, we're just gonna be doing the roguelite mode, so we don't need to worry about that too much. As you can see, we've got ourselves kind of an FTL path system in front of us that's gonna allow us to kind of pick and choose where we wanna go. Uh, there's also going to be bonuses for us being in these various areas. So there's metacubes and sarcophagus charges down there. All right. Uh, what we're doing in this game is we are protecting that sarcophagus. That is the ultimate goal. It looks like we've got a boss at the end down and over here. Uh, it's been a couple days since I played through the tutorial, so if I trip over anything, I don't remember what certain stuff does. Don't blame me. It's a first impressions channel. I always like to kind of recreate that as much as possible for a reason. A lot of people will be like, well, he makes first impressions content because he's lazy. No, not really. Um, I, I do think that first impressions are really, really important, and seeing another player go into it who's just an average dude, and seeing kind of the aspects and the things that they struggle with to understand, or the things that they instantly understand, I actually think that that's kind of important to get across, because if you're watching my channel, chances are you're looking at these games as like a prospective buyer, and chances are you're probably kind of average, like I'm kind of average. Your experience is more than likely going to be similar if you jump in kind of blind and you have kind of like a... a I don't really, I don't like playing tutorials. I like jumping into the pool. I just jump into the deep end and I figure it out as I go. I don't know. Uh, let's go get some meta cubes, dude. Yeah, fix me up with them cubes, dog. Let me get them. All right, so our first battle. What you need to know. This little number right here is how much damage this critter is going to deal when we commence the turn. This right here is how much HP he has. Apparently, he also gives his leader one HP. Okay. Uh, if we get past this guy and we hit over here, we're going to be dealing damage to their leader. Really, the ultimate goal is to kill off their leader, and their goal is to kill off our leader. Uh, we do have special abilities and things we can activate around here. So she's got Queen's Dance, so she'll gain 3 attack on one turn and 3 HP and fights enemy with the highest HP value. 
So she basically declares a duel with their strongest person in that column. We've got Mazoon. Uh, Mazoon has custom construction given player's hand a Lumabot. Uh, one four with four shields and corruption. So he deals one damage, four HP, and he comes in with four shields. Gotcha. And then we have Galdir, who has the Sanctitus Might, uh, which allows him to stun three enemy creatures. We have our Luma right here. Our Luma is the cost. Basically, it's our mana for playing creatures. Uh, each of these rows will attack on their own row after deployed, so keep that in mind. We have a couple of monsters available. We can go with a Luma Bot. It looks like the Luma Bot ability activates, so he's got initiation. Draw power for each other Luma Bot on the battlefield. Okay. Let's kind of see what that does. I'm curious. So he's going to deal one damage, and as you can see, the UI is actually really, really good at telegraphing, like, what's going to happen. Uh, yeah, let's put in some Luma Bots and stuff, dude. Nice. Okay, so we draw an extra unit right there. I have an unstable mesh on that side. Man, that's a big hitter right there. I don't know what I want to do about that. What does this do? Monad recycling, destroy allied minion, gain two Luma. It's probably a good idea, especially with how cheap they were. All right, so we have the aggressor. We'll put the aggressor out because we need to get more HP on this row. Otherwise, we're not going to make it. And then we'll go right there. And it looks like we're going to survive on that row. But we've played out pretty much all of our energy. So if you played Nowhere Profit, which if you like this combat system, definitely check out Nowhere Profit as well. I hate to turn one game into an advertisement for another game. That's not my intent. It's not what I'm trying to do. But if you enjoy this sort of like lane-based, position-based monster combat, uh, this game is doing a pretty good job at it. It has some pretty sweet animations. Nowhere Profit is fully done while you wait. Because you guys are only going to be able to get the prologue for this game. You're not going to be able to play this part. You're going to be playing effectively the tutorial and the opening storyline. But if you wanted something to tide you over until this game comes out, Nowhere Profit has a very, very similar uh, combat system. All right, we're going to end our turn. We're done right there. Uh, he's going to deal six damage out. That really sucks because it means he's going to bulldoze through like a lot of my monsters. Oh, really? He only killed the one. Of uh oh. Wow. They played a wild ass hand over here. Okay. Oof. I don't know what I want to do here. Yikes. They played a dirt bag of a turn. All right. We'll put him right there. And it looks like he's going to bulldoze through all three of them, but he's going to die in the process. I'm okay with that. We still need to resolve whatever's going to happen over here. We have three mana left. The Naga's just going to trade. Ah, defense drone. There we go. He'll put a shield in front of himself. Love the little animations in this game. Like that shield animation right there? That is the hotness. I like it a lot. Uh, so that should be a solid turn right there. I think we should be okay. Oh, really? They bursted through him. Fair enough. Our hero's taking a little bit of damage over here, but we are getting damage out, which is really all that truly matters. We have five damage going over there. I would like to break through. I probably should have placed him a little bit farther forward. I'm going to put that right there for some extra attack. So that's going to give us six out right here. Why does it say five out? Should it be six? Hmm. I'm curious. So we have five damage going out right there. He only hits for one. Man, I really don't want to waste a Naga on this, but I guess I have to. Oh, he didn't die. Why did he have plus one to his HP? He should have been like a 1-4, right? I don't know. Either way... It seems like we're going to take a little bit of a scuffing over here. And I'm all right with that. Ooh. We actually kind of did not draw that great. Okay. Well, I think we have to kill stuff on this lane. I think if we don't, we're going to regret it. He can still soak a hit. She can still soak a hit. So I feel like we're still strong right here. We got a really, really bad hand right there. I, I don't really know what to do. Uh, we'll go and we'll reduce his attack by one as well because it's the only play that we can make. And maybe it'll kind of reduce the impact of what's going on here. Good. Well, our sarcophagus and our heroes didn't take any damage. So that's all that I really care about. Uh, we do need to get through and we do need to wipe this guy. 
I'm gonna play a stun ability right here. That's gonna st Oh, I didn't need to do that. Okay, well, we need to kill this thing. Like, we have no choice. This thing needs to die. So if we can kill him on this turn... Oh, that's right, he's stunned till next turn. Urf. I think he's out of cards, though. Oh, no, he's not. He, never mind. He's not out of cards. He has all the cards in the world to smack me in the face with. All right. We're going to kill all of them. They're all going to die. That's one damage out right there. Yeah, I really need that damage to go through. Yikes. She's still going to die, right? Yeah. I should have played his ability on this turn and hoped that I stunned things on the top lane, but I wasn't paying attention to the attacks on these dudes. Uh, yeah, we don't have anything to play. Like, we have no we have no hand generation right now. Uh, so we're, we're living in a world of big, big problems for right now. Ugh, my man's got tanks on, like, every single row. Brutal. He's got his plus one attack. Reduce that. I just can't get enough cards. Yeah, I think this will work for now. I, I, I don't think we have a whole lot of options, but I think that should be game right there. I think I've configured this in such a way that we will win. There we go. Perfect. We lost our heroes, though, man. Our, our heroes got deuced on. This is a hard game. Like, it really sincerely is. Uh, if you overplay your hand or whatever, you can get into some serious, serious trouble. Uh, we've got a sarcophagus charge right there. We got an arcana cell. We got two metacubes and an architect or an architectus element. All right. I'm okay with it. So, with our Arcana Cell, we get to pick one of three spells that we can add to our hand. I think I would like to get Maxwell's Secret. I'll take that. That sounds good. And then we can also upgrade powers with these two things that we picked up. So this guy will give us two shields when he initiates. Oh, we can get plus eight? Oh, good lord. Eight shields right there, but he loses some attack. I wonder, does the shield stay up until it's destroyed? Either way, I gotta go for that. That's hot and spicy. Uh, he's gonna cost four, though, so that's pretty much like our entire turn if we want to get after that. What other cool stuff can we get to here? Well, it looks like there's a couple in here that I can upgrade. I can either upgrade this guy right here, so two damage to them and their leader. That's a little bit nicer. Uh, we can go with Aggressor which is going to upgrade his attack to 3, but it's going to reduce his cost to 1 and his HP to 1. Don't know if I want to do that. Honestly, our main problem right now is tanking. Uh, we, need to, we need to do better. All creatures in the squad gain plus 2 attack. That's kind of nice. Yeah, I think I could go with that. Let's mutate him. Sounds good. We'll go with an upgraded version of him. Uh, I don't think that there's anything else that we can fiddle around with for right now. Our old Tori... I feel feel like they're okay. We don't have any upgrade points right now. So let's take a look at the map and figure out what we can do. So, the ancient technology of the sarcophagus is going to accumulate charge during the mission. Okay. What kind of monster? We have erase power too. That's probably going to let me erase cards from my deck, but I kind of like my deck right now. Let's go ahead and do the next battle because I do actually find these battles to be really satisfying. I personally did not enjoy the prologue that much, so I enjoyed the storyline of the prologue. But the prologue is very much kind of on rails, and it relies on you losing battles a lot, and then, like, it'll be now, play, you know, it'll force you to play until you lose a battle, and then it'll be like, play this card, and it'll auto-win for you or whatever. And they use that trope a couple of times in the prologue, and it just didn't work for me. He's going to tank that down there. I'm kind of okay with him tanking that down there. I honestly don't really care that much. I'm going to put the mesh right there, I guess. We got three damage coming out right there.
I guess he can absorb that. We didn't really play him to his maximum capacity. I was more effective at tanking down here. I probably should have done that. Where is that two coming from? I'm curious. Where are we taking that two damage from? I guess we're not. It looks like some of the... Wait, no, we did take that two damage. Oh, maybe he had like a self-destruct ability or something when he dies. Maybe that's what it was. This dude right here, this mesh should be able to hold that down no problem. Okay, so we got these little dudes right here. Who are actually kind of cheap and kind of awesome. Like, we can straight throw out, like, a lot of damage right there. That's not bad. I mean, I'd like to reduce somebody's damage here, but... Maybe somebody will survive if I do that. Who knows? We've got a lot of damage going out right there, though. We basically almost got the battle squared away. Alright, so we've got all these Fungaris we can play around with. They're expensive, though. That's the problem with them, is they're, they don't really bring that many stats to the table. So she can eat the three hit. He cannot eat what's up here. So he's not going to make that. So we got to do that right there. This little guy, what do we have going on? We got the hammer down here. We can brutal strike that guy. Eh, we can soak the one damage right there. I'm not worried about it. Yeah, I'll just play the Fungari right there for now. Try to keep as much of this, like, going as possible. I'm going to try to run out his hand, basically. Uh, we just don't have enough energy to really make, like, strong plays that I want to play. So you give eight shields. It's so expensive, but it's so tempting. So he gets three shields when he spawns in. I think that's solid. That sounds good to me. I'm going to go with the three attack right there. I'll put the Luma bot in too. I'm trying to deal damage. I'm trying to strike while the iron's hot. Like we're tanking effectively down here. So I'm not really that worried about what we have going on. Like I think he's going to keep playing annoying little minions here and there. Let's go ahead and run Galdir's ultimate. Which is going to save us a little bit. So it got rid of two lanes actually. That's really, really good. He can take a little bit more damage here. That does give me a little bit of setup time, but I think maybe not enough to really get done. That's a great card, man. I really like this card. I wish I had a few more of these little defense drones. They're nice, dude. They bring a, they bring that free shield as a lifesaver, dude. It buys you breathing room, which is really what you need a lot of the time in this game because the enemy can be really oppressive in the way that they play. Sometimes I feel like the AI can play a lot more stuff than I can, like their stuff is cheaper or something. Uh, it might have to do with how I played my deck or the, the way I chose my heroes, but sometimes it feels that way. It might be a it might be a bias though. Yeah, get the aggressor in there actually. Give him a give him a minute or two to play the game and get him bopping because he's got a one turn run up anyways before he's going to be useful to me. So like, we might as well. I'll put that little dude in too, and then I've got a plan for next turn on the top lane. Actually, I don't think I'll need a plan for next turn on the top lane. I think we're in good shape. Yeah, I think this guy's hosed already. I got two damage coming out to there. We will just reinforce the hell out of this little lane right here. There we go. And that should be our game arena. Perfect. Took him out. We lost Galdir in the process, but like, eh, Galdir was not that. Galdir was not that plot relevant anyway. Sometimes you gotta go. We got three sarcophagus charge right there. Hell yeah. And then we got an Arcana Cell, so we're going to be able to upgrade something here. Dude, I'm, I'm stoked. I do like the level of customization we get. Script. Generate a Luma. Ooh. So every turn it generates a Luma? Ooh. I got to have the energy generation. The, the energy generation is so good. 
Like, progressive bot is nice, but I gotta go with the energy generation. I'm a big fan of energy stacked decks. And then we have mutators that we can throw out there. We can make this guy generate two Luma so long as we can protect him. Oof. It's a temptation. Doesn't look like we have... Oh, we can go with a scout drone. Generate two shields on every squad. It's tempting, but look how expensive he is. What does protection do? Immunity to a single source of damage. He costs seven, though. I can't even generate that much energy right now. But he's a 10-2. God, dude. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to upgrade this guy, and we're just going to play really risky and dangerous. That's what I'm thinking. Playing risky and dangerous sounds like the plot to me. So we've got a meta cube, and we've got an arcana cell right there. We have a question mark right here. Um, let's go for the question mark. Maybe it'll lead to healing. Galdir scowled as he bandaged the nasty gash on his arm. His blood dripped from the talons of a nearby minion. Mad Elon Hazari, he muttered. All you've ever created is misery and death. Mazoon's hulking frame came bounding down the camp path. He's waving frantically at Galdir, a crooked grin splitting his face. Galdir, the city council vote is ten days! I know, Galdir scoffed. When have Sanctitus ever neglected a duty, but why does it matter to you? Katarina Hazari, we will vote for her, you too. Vote for Hazari, the madman who challenged Arcs for control? Galdir's frown hardens as he massages the bandaged arm. You want me to throw my vote away for another monster? She's an angel. Mazoon's left eye glowed yellow as he used his Lumabot to project an image of the young Architectus. Katarina is a friend of us, not like Elon. With her, the council can help fix the visor system. Um, I have no idea what any of this means. But I'm just going to turn it down and we'll move on. Ooh, we can get starting hand right there? Yeah, dude. Let me have a bigger starting hand. I'm ready for that. I like how you get permanent bonuses that make you, like, stronger. Ooh, really? A 214, huh? Gross. I don't intensely know how I feel about that. It's pretty disgusting. I'm just going to have him tank. We'll throw out what damage we can where we can, I guess. I was going to say, he's going to play something like solid in these other areas just to mess with us. Let's go with, so we've got the, we've got, there's our Aetherus 7, but I don't really want to play him right now. We've got Progressive Bot over here. Yeah, go for it. That should wipe that whole lane, which I think is admirable. I think I can accept that. I'm going to put him in the back. But it's like really, really important that we protect this guy. Like we have to protect this dude. If we if we don't protect this dude, we're going to regret it. Like he has to, he has to survive. Like he has to. He's generating so much energy for us. I'm going to reduce this guy's attack. I'm going to put you right there. So that you can kill that guy. Yeah, we'll go for a big turn right there. I probably should have played that one first. Then I think we could have basically wiped him. Alright, we're going to focus on protecting this thing if we can. I don't know how they're going to play on other on other lanes, but we got to do what we got to do. So they're going to kill him off. He's going to kill that. That's three damage right there. Okay, good. I would like to have three shields right here. And if we could have even more shields, that would be good. I'm going to reduce his attack so that he's not whittling on me nonstop. There we go. We have a we have a strong, strong field right now. Like, I'm not too worried about our safety. The obvious play is right there. And then we give it a go. Two more damage out. He hasn't managed... I mean, these things right here are really tough to get around. They just have so much HP. 
Uh, they are mean little bastards, is the truth of the matter. So we've only got one damage coming in right there. Okay. I just need four damage on one of these lanes. That's really, like, all I need. Eh, I don't need the Luma. We'll be okay. I'd actually kind of like to get rid of these right here. They are not that helpful. Uh, we can afford to lose this guy, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. He's going to face tent. Oh, my goodness gracious. Oh, it's because he got three of those on the battlefield. That's, like, super bad. Actually, that might be a wipe. Yeah, he got three of those into play. Uh, we do have options still. It sort of depends who we can neutralize. We didn't neutralize him, which is a bummer. That's really, really bad. I was sincerely hoping we would. I would really rather not have to tank all this, but... At this point, I'm just trying to get damage off. Can I just hit him with that? I can't. Okay, never mind. Uh, well, I can kill this one over here and negate the bonus that all the other ones are getting. Unless he plays another one next turn. Kinda... It remains to be seen. Who knows? Hey, nasty turn, but it looks like maybe we pulled through. I don't know why everything died. I'm a little bit confused as to why everything was dead, but hey, I'll take it. I didn't expect that. I expected us to survive like one more turn. Maybe corruption makes it so that when you kill one of them, it kills all three of the other ones. I don't know. Maybe they're linked together. Maybe there's something there that I'm not getting, but those things can be kind of nasty. Like I've run into them a couple times in my test plays, those little antelope looking things. And if they get three of them down, man, you are just in a world of hurt. But they are, they're hard to counter because they have so much HP in the first place. I'd like to get something that has like a... So he's got script recall. So he goes back into your hand every turn. That's weird. What do you do? Initiation. Reduce the Luma cost of a random power in your hand by one. Okay. Generate five shields on the target squad. I definitely like that. I think I need to find some erasers to get rid of these two right here. I don't like these two cards. And we've got another one. And we've got Ego Collision. Target minion gets one attack and fights with the creature in a mirrored position. Okay, good to know. And then we've got another progressive bot right there. We've got a Ramuro Monk. He gains protection, so he gets immunity to a single damage source. And then for every Ultori in the squad, he gets plus one attack and plus one HP. So you only want to play this guy to Galdir's lane. He costs four? Really? Interesting. Huh. Well, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not super sure how I'm going to bring him into my overall strategy because he is expensive. But we can give it a go. What's down here? Arc's Health, Sarcophagus Charge 2, and Ultori Upgrade. I'll take the Ultori Upgrade. That sounds really, really good. But yeah, this game is called Against the Moon. I hope you like what you've seen so far. I actually, I think this game could turn out to be a really, really rad game. Um, it reminds me a lot of Nowhere Profit, but Nowhere Profit has like a cover system in it where you can deploy behind rocks to take reduced damage and things like that. And then this game has a lot more mechanics that like attack mirrored locations or have like an AOE that hits the mirrored location and one like behind it. Like this game feels a lot more positional uh, than Nowhere Profit was, but Nowhere Profit, the game is similar. Nowhere Profit, you can move your minions around, though, every single turn if you wanted to, if I remember correctly. They don't stay in the same spot. But yeah, another another cool game. Uh, check it on out. I'll have a link for you down below. You can play the prologue. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile every day in the world of indie gaming, so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we head against the moon. Tomorrow, who knows what we'll have. It's a very, very busy week for indie games. See y'all later, and thank you for being here.